So we're just on our way to our first ever training session at Yoronga. Um, we've been talking all day, the girls, and we're all really excited and a few of us are pretty nervous. There's gonna be, a, obviously, a few people there, a few of our family and friends. We're all uh, just so excited that this day's come. 21st of November, it's been a long time coming and I'm super excited that I'm a part of it. The first training session was amazing really to have pretty much all the staff of the footy club uh, down to wish the players luck and goodwill and all those, those sorts of things. It was actually uh, you know, quite moving, quite daunting actually to have your players there um, surrounded by players, staff and so forth and even the CEOs out throwing sausages uh, on the barbecue so that was quite funny to see that. Just the spirit of the club and the togetherness and, and wishing everyone well. I think the players really appreciated that and, and set a really good tone from the outset that they felt welcome uh, in the Brisbane Lions. This has been a long time coming for these players and uh, I think as a club we're really, really happy that we've got such great support here tonight. But the journey for some of these players has been a very, very long one. Uh, they finally get the chance to take on footy in a professional sense and uh, to have a club support like this on the first night is quite overwhelming actually. So thanks to everyone who's come out to support our very first night. Um, I know the players are dying to get out there. It raised the hair on my neck, that, um, that speech that he did. It was right before he ran out to do, just do a training session. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts, thanks to everyone who's come out to support us. Uh, we're glad that we're now part of the Brisbane Lions and we can't wait to get out there and uh, make everyone proud. So thanks everyone for coming along to support us. To have the Lions there, the whole club, the staff, the, the men's team as well, it makes you really think that you're really embraced and we have that motto where it's all for one and it really felt like in that moment it really was all for one. Um, definitely will go down as one of the best training sessions um, and yeah, definitely enjoyed that night and just everyone around us. Pre-season training was very, very hard. None of us girls have ever been exposed to the high intensity that we were and we went from zero to 100 really, really quickly. And um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but I think it made us really, really close as a playing group. It's really important that you get to top speed. It's exciting to be surrounded by superstars and know that they're on your team and you're going to take on the world together. I think what was most surprising about what the girls brought to the pre-season was just their will to, to do it, get it done. You know, it was hot, you know, it was 35 degrees sometimes. They'd often work full days at work. There was just this kind of feeling of excitement and, you know, let's just try and be the best that we could be. Um, I think it was mixed in there with some anxious moments, like were we doing enough? Were we going to be good enough? Ultimately, I think they could see, look, it's really only eight weeks before we start playing, so if we don't put the hard work in now, you know, we, we might pay for that when we, when we start playing. It's not about rising to the occasion, it's dropping to the standard of your training. So if we train low, you know, that's how we're going to perform on the weekend. If we train hard now, that's how we're going to perform on the weekend. We want to perform hard. Let's do this. From the outset, that was one of the hallmarks of our, our group, that they were really, really close. And you could see that uh, early on, you know, even when we started training back in November, um, you could tell that they were, they were really, really close from the outset. Coming together through adversity, if you like, no one talking about the Lions much, we'll show them, you know, get together and let's be, let's be really strong and united and see what we can do and see if we can shake up this competition.
Yeah, the leadership team um, essentially was selected by the players and, and then sort of ticked off by the coaching staff. Um, and what we wanted is basically an extension of the coaching staff within the group. And um, we're really lucky that the way the players voted more or less stacked up with who we thought was going to be in that group anyway. To have our first captain of the group, I think is a, a really special um, appointment for this particular person, given that it's the very first year, inaugural year of the competition. Um, so really happy to say that our captain for 2017, our inaugural year in the AFLW will be Emma Zilke. Yeah. It's a huge honour to be able to captain any side, let alone the first ever uh, women's side. So I was extremely proud and um, to be voted by them and to be voted by the whole club um, gave me a huge sense of pride and um, ownership. And, you know, I, I'm forever grateful for the club to, to put me in charge, not say that I was in charge, but to actually trust me to be able to lead the girls and make good decisions on and off the field. And, you know, it was, it's a massive responsibility, but yeah, I was just so stoked that I was voted the captain. I'm just so proud to, to actually, I don't even want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's been a bit rough being on the sidelines, but seeing you girls work so hard out there motivates me so much. And, I'm so just proud to, to be able to lead, the, lead you girls. I feel like we're going to be so competitive and so intimidating going out there and being a little bit of an underdog, but um, no, I couldn't be happier to get voted this. Mind blowing, really. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Emma was the best choice to captain the team basically because her peers thought so, and she's someone that. Uh, absolutely 100% leads by example on the field and um, carries through whatever message the coaching staff want um, bestowed upon the group I guess so um, she's a logical one she's the one that's stood up in high pressure games in the years gone by she's captained her club um, she's been involved in the exhibition games and she's stacked up really well in high pressure games so um, from that aspect you know you're going to be able to rely on your leader from a performance point of view but you're also going to be able to rely on her to pass on the message of the coaching group and um, stand up in critical situations in big moments in games and I think uh, the season this year proved that. Our first of our vice captains, Sam Burgo. You know that feeling when you're about to run a race and you're all these butterflies but they're moving really fast? A bit like that and um, pretty excited, blown away. A um, bit of a player vote, so pretty uh, stoked that my teammates think that I should be in a position like that. So. Uh, second vice captain, Emily Bates. Yeah, yeah. Our third vice captain is Leah Caslow. Yeah. And our fourth vice captain, very pleased to announce um, someone that's joined the group uh, from outside Queensland, Sabrina frederick Troy. Yeah. To be announced as one of the vice captains, I really was so surprised. I didn't expect um, to be in that position since I am only 21 still and there's a lot of leaders in the team. But um, I was just so happy and proud and it just felt like all the hard work I've put in over the years has paid off um, and I was just so, so happy. Um, to be selected in the leadership group um, still brings a smile to my face just because um, you have doubts being one of the youngest players in the playing group um, and to be selected amongst your peers to be a leader of the club is probably one of the most amazing things you can experience. It brings, I, I guess, light to my life because you think you can lead those girls and to accomplish anything. So um, yeah, really surreal feeling and loved being a leader of the club. Very fortunate that we had um, three of the more experienced ones, if you like, with um, uh, Zilks, Sam and, and Leah being the more experienced leaders and then and then Batesy and Sabs as the younger ones, the emerging leaders, I guess, coming through um, around them. But all five of them had quite different things to bring to the table. It was just really fully rounded, supportive, and um, it was a strong leadership group. Any one of them could have been the captain as well, so. Caitlin Collins, the most festive of the Brisbane Lions. How was your Chrissy? Oh, it was fantastic. 
Look, I'm ready for uh, 2017 Christmas, but yeah, it was really good. See the family, have a break from footy, but it's good to be back here and get back into training. How's the foot going? The question on everyone's lips. I think the most talked about subject in AFLW. How's it going? You'll be back. The foot is a big tick. Looking forward to round one? Yes, so excited. And I can see you hit the beach hard. Got a nice tan, rocking it. How'd it go? Yeah, got a nice pasty white going here. More my freckles are going to join up soon, so. Got out in the moon a little bit. Yeah, moon burn. 31 days till the official first bounce of our game. Get around us and go Lions. Good view, some good training view. After the Christmas break, I guess our focus is more a little bit on the style of game that we wanted to play. We had a really short amount of time to get that right. We didn't want to waste any training session. We would constantly remind ourselves that we have round one coming up and not to have one night that were flat because it was just a waste of a training session. The feeling in pre-season for the whole group, I think, was just excitement. To be able to do that for the first time and, and be a professional athlete and be in that environment, even though it was really, really hard and invigorating at times, you're just excited to be there and, and to be doing those things because you've been dreaming of it your whole life. I feel like I'm getting better every session. We've got such a great group of coaches that we have you know, access to who are really open and willing to help us. So for all of us, that's great. But for me personally, I really wanted to work on some contested stuff, my contested footy, and I think that that's come a long way. Everyone feels as fit as they've ever been, as strong as they've ever been, and we just can't wait to play some footies. We've gelled really well um, so far, so I think the practice match on the weekend will determine where we're at and I think we'll be we'll be up there. Coming back from Christmas break, we pretty much had about a week and a half lead in to a practice game, a week later um, another training and then we were playing. So the practice game was pretty critical in making sure that we were prepared. For the practice match against GWS, we were just hoping for a win, um, as every team does, but I think also just to be able to run the legs through and, and put to practice what we were doing on the training track. It was a very, very hot day. Uh, I thought, God, I'm not sure how GWS are going to take this heat. Uh, because of the flight schedule, we had to kind of fly in the middle of the day. And by about 10 a.m., you know, it was sort of me and the team manager and two men and his dog. There wasn't many people there. I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe there's not a lot of interest in this. But you have done the work. You have prepared really well. So confidence from that, all right? Physically, you've done some massive sessions and we've had a particularly hot summer. So we've had to endure tough conditions, we're prepared really well, we're building our game plan, here's a chance to go and try it out. Not everything will work, don't get frustrated, we keep building and building and building, get ready for round one, which is the main prize. But today, let's get out there, have our first crack at it, have a look at how things roll out, um, be positive, enthusiastic, and let's, uh, let's serve it up to the opposition the first time we get to play some All right, let's go. By the time we had the team roll out again, there was probably close to 2,000 people there and the roar that erupted when they saw those girls run out, everybody around us just got goosebumps. Just running out and there was a big crowd cheer. It was um, a bit, it was a bit um, surreal to be honest because we weren't expecting it, especially when the weather was so bad. <laughs> We wanted to work out how we moved the footy. Obviously it wasn't as clean as the execution we wanted to because it was pouring rain, but um, just to have our structures in place, I guess from that first game, you could tell that our back line was gonna be our strongest point, which it was all year. Um, you felt so comfortable if the ball went over your head as a midfielder that it's gonna, gonna get chopped off by our defenders. So.
to their credit, they really toughed it out in that first um, half. So it was a very, very scrappy, wet, um, ugly game. And, uh, you know, we were just able to tough it out um, longer than what they could. <laughs> I think that really shook the girls, that they probably were feeling a bit more confident than maybe they should have been and that we still really needed to work really hard. We still weren't, you know, dominant or good enough to kind of relax and think that we were going to roll into the competition. So it was a great experience for them, probably set the tone that, you know, we were just going to have to be a really hard working team. We weren't flashy and skillful, we just had to get the job done. That was our first real taste of um, AFLW and um, yeah, it was, it was a really good game. The Brisbane Lions, the real surprise pack of this season. Oh, Frederick Traub, she spins, she shoots, she scores. Big pack.